Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete lecture. And in today's lecture, we are going to take a look at Newman projections and how we can assess organic molecules by citing down a carbon carbon bond and looking at all the various types of strain that will be associated with that. So that's coming up on the channel right now. So Newman projections are going to be a situation where we can look at a organic molecule and we're going to evaluate it by looking at its carbon-carbon bond. And specifically, when we take a look at the carbon-carbon bond, instead of viewing it from the side perspective like we normally would, we are going to sight down the bond where we turn it this way. So we're really going to be looking at it from a head-on perspective from the carbon-carbon bond. So, for example, when we take a look at this, one of the easiest ways that we can look at it is through ethane. So, if I were to take a look at ethane, it would be two carbons, and I would have three hydrogens that would be associated with this. So, I'm going to draw my tetrahedral stereochemistry here. And when I look at this, it is really the carbon-carbon bond that's going to be in focus here. So here's ethane. And what I want to do is I want to look at the carbon-carbon bond this way or via this direction. And one of the important things that you need to realize is that there is free rotation around this carbon-carbon bond. So what does that mean? It means that when I look at ethane, this carbon-carbon bond has free rotation, meaning that these can move back and forth because they are not locked up the same way that they would be in a pi bond. And so that allows me to look at the different ways that the substituents, in this case for ethane, it would just be the hydrogens here, but how the substituents could potentially rotate and interfere or come close to one another in that process. So when we get ready to look at this, the way that we want to actually approach it is that we are going to draw a upside down Y type of figure. And then we'll draw a circle that comes in the middle of this. And so this is really the carbon-carbon structure that we're looking at. So this upside down Y, if you will, is going to represent one of the carbons. And then this circle in the back will represent one of the other carbons. And these lines here will represent the various substituents that can be attached. So in the case of ethane, the front carbon would have one, two, three hydrogens. And then the back carbon would also have one, two, three hydrogens. So if I'm looking at this, the way that this would look if you were to take a look at this molecule right here, you can see here's ethane. So I've got three hydrogens on one carbon and I have three hydrogens on the other. And if I were to look at this in a normal line bond drawing, it would look something like this. But as I get ready to convert it into a Newman projection, I am facing this forward and I'm looking at it from this perspective right here. Now what you can see is here in the front is this upside down Y type of figure. So if you look up here, here's the top of the Y, and then here are the two bottom portions, right here and here, okay? And then if I'm looking at the other portion in the back, here are the two upper portions, and then here's the bottom one right here. So you can see that these kind of all create the Newman projection. So here it is from the side, and then here it is what we call citing down the carbon-carbon bond. So when I'm citing down the carbon-carbon bond, okay, I have all of these different substituents in these different formations here. And so one of the carbons is in the back, one is in the front, and that is exactly what I have 
when I'm looking at this right here. So hopefully that's clear based on the model that I have here. And in some of the future lectures, we'll take a look at uh, situations that are more complicated than just ethane, but ethane is a good place to start with this. So because of the free rotation, I really have two different forms that I can take. So the first form is the one that I have already drawn here, and that is called the staggered form. So a staggered form is going to be a situation where the substituents are apart from one another, or at least from a uh, perspective of the drawing, they're as apart as they can be from one another in the bond angles. So right here, this would be an example of a staggered formation where I've got each of these individual hydrogens and they have the essentially 60 degree uh, portions that are in between one another. Okay. Now, staggered is the stabler of the two. And that is because these electrons or these bonds are not approaching one another. Okay. You can also have what's called the eclipse conformation. So if you think about the word eclipse, just like when we view an eclipse in the sky, if you're talking about the sun and the moon, they're coming over one another. The eclipsed form is when these are going to eclipse one another. So instead of them having some sort of a staggered form formation like this, as they continue to align, at some point, these groups are going to eclipse, and they're really going to be lined up with one another, where I can almost barely tell the difference between the front and the back carbon, right? So here, again, is staggered. I can quite clearly see the difference between the front and the back. And then for the eclipse, as these two approach one another, they are going to overlap with each other. Now, what that also means is that the bonds in between here are going to be in alignment with one another, whereas in the staggered, they fall out of alignment with one another. And again, free rotation around the single bond is essential for this because you've got the ability to constantly be moving back and forth between staggered, and then you can move into an eclipsed form and back into a staggered form. So having the concept or the understanding of free rotation around a single bond is very important when you're looking at this. Okay, so the eclipse, the way that we will typically draw this is that you will still show both of the substituents on the front and the back, but they will be drawn very close to one another in comparison to what you see in the staggered. So we'll draw them almost as if they're overlapping this will generally be how it's shown. And when they are almost overlapping, this is called the eclipsed formation. Okay. Eclipsed. Now, one of the things that's important that you want to keep in mind here is that the eclipsed formation of a Newman projection is going to be higher in energy than that of the staggered formation. And there's really two different reasons for that. Uh, and it really has to do with the strain that is going to occur due to electrons interfering with one another. So the first of the strains that we really have to concern ourselves with when we get into this is called torsional strain. So for torsional strain, you're dealing with the strain that comes from bonds that are going to be overlapping. So when bonds overlap, you have to keep in mind that bonds are really nothing more than electrons, okay? And as the electrons overlap, they are going to place strain or repulsion on one another. So what we're talking about for torsional strain here is that as I take a look at this molecule, okay, as I take a look at the ethane, here it is in a staggered formation. As I start to bring this into an eclipsed formation, the fact that these bonds right here are going to be overlapping with one another is going to cause some strain to the molecule. Now, the thing with torsional strain is that it can be alleviated by going back into the staggered formation. So with torsional strain, it is a brief type of strain that only occurs as we get this bond-bond overlap, 
and the repulsion that would occur between these two bonds overlapping. But then as soon as it goes in back into the staggered formation, the torsional strain is going to be alleviated and we're not going to have that torsional strain present anymore. Okay. Now the other type of strain that is going to be present is called steric strain. Now steric strain is a much more, um, I don't necessarily want to say important strain, but it's going to be appearing far more often in organic chemistry as we study uh, different effects of molecules and reaction. So steric strain has to do with uh, groups or especially as you get larger groups. Okay, so we'll put groups, but then in parentheses we'll put larger groups um, in proximity to one another. So when you've got groups that are larger, they come in proximity to one another, you start to get steric strain. So what is this referring to? This is referring to, if I take a look at this, when I get the eclipsing here, right? Here's the torsional strain between the bonds, but I also have two hydrogens. And as the hydrogens get close to one another, those will create steric strain. Now this is not uh, represented in the best way just using hydrogens, but if you can imagine that these are methyl groups or they're uh, t-butyl groups or something very large like that, okay, even ethyl groups or something of that nature, these larger groups are going to have more and more steric strain because as I have CH3 groups or ethyl groups or t-butyl groups, those groups are going to contain a lot of atoms and bonds, and as they get close to one another, they are going to want to repel. So it's general electron density based on large chunks or portions of a molecule. So hydrogens aren't that large, they're relatively small, but let's say that these were methyl groups or ethyl groups, you would have much more steric strain as these come into alignment. Now, the key here is that when they come out of alignment, okay, you would still potentially have steric strain. So let's say that uh, right here, that this and this would both be a methyl group or an ethyl group, some larger group, right? So they certainly have steric strain when they're closely aligned, but even when they start to move out of alignment, I would still have some relative proximity of this methyl group and this methyl group, or this ethyl group and this ethyl group to one another here. And so the key here is that you really want those then to move all the way on opposite ends. So you want the largest group to be here and you want the next largest group to be here. Okay, and so that's something called the anti-conformation and we'll talk about that more in the next video where you want the two largest groups ideally to be as far away, 180 degrees away from one another as possible. So here's one large group and here's the other. One is on the front and the uh, opposite end and the other is on the back and the opposite end. You're keeping them as far away as possible from one another. So that's steric strain. And again, steric strain is going to play a larger role in organic chemistry as a whole in comparison to torsional strain, which really has to just do with the free rotation of these molecules around the single bond. Okay, so that primarily covers the introduction to Newman projections. And in the next video, we'll take a look at some of the situations where you have larger groups and then you have different uh, staggered conformations. You can have a staggered conformation that's called a Gauche conformation where they get closer to one another. And then obviously we have the different eclipse conformations where you can get kind of what's like a total eclipse, which is where the two largest groups get together. And then you can have other forms of eclipse where the largest groups are not completely aligned, but you still have that torsional alignment and the larger groups are maybe 60 degrees apart from one another. Uh, instead of just right over top of one another. Okay, so hopefully that helps to introduce the concept of Newman projections, and I will definitely post another video that goes into some more detail about Newman projections and the different types of strains uh, in the uh, next lesson. So thank you all very much for learning with me. Remember to head on over to chemcomplete.com if you want to take a look at a another video or if you want to get any type of free resources or paid for guides that we have to help you over there it's a great way to support the channel remember to like the video if you found it helpful and i will see you guys in the next lecture